morning guys. Uh, John from Rural Homesteaders here. Talk to you guys for a minute about overwintering your crops. A lot of times people don't like to leave their crops in. They want to pull them. Here's some of the crops that we overwinter that do well and here's some that don't do well. So here we've got some cabbage. Cabbage is doing, uh, doing really well. It's bolting up and then re um, uh, bringing us another head of cabbage, but up higher than it was before. Here is some eggplant. Eggplant did not do well overwintering it. We're going to pull all that out. It looks like it's got some disease that's picked up over the winter. We tried to treat it over the winter and we're not successful with that. So we are going to stop that and, and start off with some new stuff. Here's another cabbage head. It looks really nice and healthy. No bugs. Um, I think it's going to do really well. Here's something that I like to overwinter because it gives bees flowers first thing in the first thing in the spring. We are just about out of winter, not quite, but got all these little heads of cabbage on here, and or I'm sorry, heads of uh, broccoli on here, and these are just great to eat. So what I'll do is we'll end up just picking a whole bunch of this stuff off. Um, flowers and all and cutting it up and throwing it in a salad it's uh it's really good and healthy and they're everywhere and so i end up with just a constant broccoli feast as we go through this another thing we like to overwinter is our brussels sprouts we let them die back a little and then the first thing in the spring as you can see here we've got just a whole bunch of now this is a huge broccoli plant and it's just starting to come out and it's going to do really well again this year so we're going to be um, picking that off soon we did though get a frost and the frost killed off the ends as you can see right here this was a, a huge piece right here that I'm going to end up cutting back and then we'll leave a, a portion of it you can see how it's just it's just falling apart inside I've got holes inside of it so we're gonna go ahead and cut that back and cut our losses on that one and then just plant some more around it. We've also got more, more heads over here. We've got all kinds of kale between here the, that's just got huge heads of, of kale ready to eat, ready to go. Don't have to wait to plant and start over again for the new year. Um, but what I wanted to show you was around the corner here. And this is, this is a cabbage that we planted. Get around here. This is a cabbage that we planted. And it came up, it grew up, got off the ground, got up a, a foot or two off the bed, and then it started making heads of cabbage. So you can see, we could pick this thing, take it in, have, uh, have cabbage for dinner. But it's got like 20 of these heads started on it. So I'm really happy with the way it's taken off. Really glad that it's going to be able to give us something right off the bat. Right off the bat. Again, more kale. Here are um, actual onions that we planted in the ground as a whole onion. We're getting more seeds up for our uh, um, marigolds. So we've just got a, a ton of stuff coming in, looking good, uh, looking like we're going to have a good harvest this year. Um, one of the things we had in here were some uh, butterfly bushes or milkweed, if you will. This isn't local milkweed for California. Um, people say you need to cut it back every year. We let it go to seed and we're going to be cutting it back shortly. But we wanted to save the seeds, so we let it go to seed so that we can get the seeds off of it. And we've got different types of lettuce, different types of... Um, just just a bunch of different types of cold crops that came in we didn't plant every single space that we could we planted a few but as you can see in the garden here we didn't plant everything so we've got room now for our seedlings to go in and we've got a, a start on the other stuff this is some garlic we've got going here um, but again um, we put in some late eggplant and the eggplant just didn't make it through the winter and so we're just we're not even gonna mess with it we're just gonna pull it and keep going from there 
and sometimes that's just easier to do it that way. Um, I was surprised my ginger, uh, you can see it here, my ginger didn't do anything over the winter. We were hoping this would take and we'd end up with some fresh ginger already, but that hasn't happened, so we're going to have to revisit our ginger and what we're doing with our ginger. Uh, just a quick tour of the of the garden. It's an it's a, a live active garden and As you can see we do square foot gardening here Each one of these has its own little water head right here that we can turn up turn down turn off And then we plant different things according to what we want to grow and we want, when we want to grow it So we'll end up using the tops of these onions as chives all year long So it's good to have some extra growing in the garden um, you guys saw where we had the garlic. There's some more garlic coming in So it's a uh, it's up and running. We aren't gonna start our garden We start each one of these individual squares as its own little garden So just food for thought as you're working on it. If you guys like these bricks right here these bricks have a hole in the middle of them and Inside those inside that hole. Let me see if I can see one inside that hole. You'll see a piece of rebar that rebar we pound all the way down and it helps hold these pieces of wood that we've got in place so all we're doing is cutting straight wood all we're doing is putting an inch by an inch on here so that when you want to reach when you want to reach in you can actually reach in and lean on it to garden nothing's more than two feet deep so as we walk around this whole horseshoe here you're reaching in only two feet to get to the center and that's what we like to do is, is not bend over too much, not have to force ourselves. Oh, here's the other side of that, uh, that cabbage that we had growing that I was talking about earlier. So yeah, the idea is to lay it out to make it easy for whoever's gonna be in the garden to be able to get in there, pull the plants out, and do what needs to be done in the garden without stressing them, stressing their back out or causing any uh, wear and tear as they're doing it. Hope the idea of a square foot garden is something that if you guys haven't looked at, you look at again. Works really well. You just got to work with what's going to be on the sunny side, what's going to not be on the sunny side, and kind of experiment to figure out where you're going to be planting those things to get them to come up. Thanks.